Again, thank you for joining us on this live Sunday edition. We've been talking about Benghazi and what it means. I mean, why would they want to order a stand down and let people be killed? Bare minimum, they ordered a stand down. That's come out. There was a stand down. They're threatening everybody. They're, 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 they're acting totally paranoid. They've been caught lying. Uh, we know there were arms being transferred. But did they go in there to get rid of the State Department because the State Department wouldn't transfer the heat-seeking missiles to Al-Qaeda? That's now being discussed on CNN. That's now what the CIA whistleblowers are telling CNN and Reuters and AP. Th this is so big. We're going to get to that with Wayne Madsen, NSA whistleblower in his own right, uh, who's testified to Congress, the EU, you name it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first off, I want to tell you about InfoWarsHealth.com. Uh, whatever I promote, it's the very best out there at the lowest price. I go out and find the best products, whether it's Pure Pure water filters with 10% off with promo code WATER, the best gravity-fed filters, stainless steel, uh, portable, uh, you name it. And they've got some new systems as well, like their Nomad at InfoWarsStore.com. I go out and find the very best products. And uh, you know, I went and did a year of research until we found the very best clean brown seaweed with all of its amazing health effects for the thyroid and the blood, according to all the medical doctors we've interviewed, uh, with the Modifylon, uh, available at InfoWarsStore.com. But separately, we have close to 400, it may be over 400 products at InfoWarsHealth.com, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, Citrus Peach Fusion, the ultimate multivitamin mineral complex super drink uh, that has whole foods, trace minerals, antioxidants, probiotics, prebiotics, amino acids, essential cofactors, and more. Go to InfoWarsHealth.com to get the lowest price anywhere on Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the original and 2.0, totally organic, Certified non-GMO organic. Nobody else can say that with the super drinks that are out there. It's got everything, every mineral, trace element, you name it. It is simply amazing. Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, the Osteo FX, the CM Plus, uh, you name it. It is all available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsHealth.com. And you can also call to ask any questions or order 888-789-9277, 888 Seven eight nine nine two seven seven. The Great Infowars team is there twenty four hours a day, seven days a week to answer your questions. They can help you sign up online if you need help. It's pretty simple, but if you need any help, they can also help you sign up to get free shipping and other discounts. You can become a distributor for signing up for ten dollars and get big discounts, or just buy right off the shopping cart at InfowarsHealth.com. And by shopping with the good guys, we're not funded by taxpayer money like NPR or MSNBC. I think it's bailout money and stimulus money. We're funded by like-minded people that vote with their dollars in the free market, free association. So if you like the hardcore journalism that's pro-America, pro-liberty, not left or right, but just hardcore truth, then support us at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsHealth.com today. All right. Going to... Going to Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com. He's a syndicated columnist written for some of the biggest papers in the country, re reported on, broke major national news stories on national security, helped found what the Electronic Frontier Foundation and other groups has testified to the EU, the Congress, uh, in the first wave of NSA exposure 15 years ago and then 12 years ago with James Bamford, uh, the producer of Nightline, Body of Secrets. So much of what's come out on the NSA was actually broken by Wayne Madsen. And Wayne Madsen was in a, a unique position to understand all of this because he worked in internal security at the NSA watching the watchers. And, and it's said that they actually follow the law uh, up until, uh, well, well, just the last decade or so. So we're going to be breaking that down with Wayne into the next hour a little bit. But first, I wanted to get into Benghazi with him. Because if you look at the layers of the onion here, folks, Wayne Madsen, Steve Pachinik, Dr. Pachinik, and Colonel Schaefer, who are, works at the highest level of black ops, all said the same thing in the week, the month, and the months after. And their interviews are all up on InfoWars.com, Insider, uh, uh, Wayne Madsen, and others expose the confirmed Benghazi was cover-up of arms transfer to Al-Qaeda. And why are we going back to this now? Because we said it first. Then CNBC of all places, uh, DrudgeReport.com covered it uh, within a month of it as well. But 
the the establishment prostitute parrot media, the state-run media, to a large extent, just said it was no big deal. A film made people mad when that film had been out for months or the trailer for it. So now it's confirmed it was about arms transfer. So the question is, this is what Wayne said nine months ago. I'm going to ask him now. The question is, A, did the attack start? It was the Benghazi hired security by the State Department, by the CIA, by the National Security Council. They didn't want to be embarrassed, so just let them kill them, and then they'll get the weapons, and we'll use the terror threat later to take rights. Or, and I think the evidence points towards this, they sent them in to wipe them out, but Navy SEALs showed up who didn't follow orders to stand down and pin down the Al-Qaeda people for six-plus hours until the cover-up became evident. Regardless, there's been a cover-up. Regardless, there's been a stand-down. Wayne Madsen of uh, WayneMadsenReport.com, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I know it's a scary position. You had to leave the country last year after this for a few months because of death threats. This is not a game, folks. This is not a joke. Look at Michael Hastings. They blew up. Uh, but... Uh, so some, it, it, we're all sad about being right. We wish we were wrong, but what now in hindsight, and now as you've been proven absolutely accurate, uh, what happened here? What is your latest intel? What are your sources saying? Well, I, it's what I said originally. I think there were a lot of things at, at play in Benghazi. Uh, I think, yes, I think uh, uh, the U.S. had supplied weapons to the Libyan rebels, and then obviously when the Syria thing uh, happened. Uh, they wanted to transfer not only weapons, but some of these uh, Islamist fighters uh, from the Libyan campaign to the Syrian campaign. And obviously, uh, 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 Stevens, the ambassador, was a part of this. The other thing, this wasn't a U.S., really a U.S. embassy operation in Benghazi. It was a CIA station operating under diplomatic cover. How many people were going in there and getting visas to visit the United States? That's usually what the purpose of embassies, an issue visa, protect U.S. And citizens. you said that last year. It's now confirmed it was a CIA op. Yeah. And so we see the rats leaving the sinking ship. The State Department points the finger at CIA. Yeah, lots of C Now we know lots of CIA personnel were on the ground in Benghazi. And then the other thing is, what happened right after Obama was uh, reelected? We had General Petraeus, the CIA director, basically fired over an extramarital affair that was known about before he was fired. But we also know that Mitt Romney during a campaign said, we need an October surprise uh, for, for this campaign. So obviously there was an interest by many parties in setting the stage for some incident at some embassy. It turns out it was Benghazi. Uh, that that, that anti-Islamic movie that came out, yes, it had been out, but look how that thing was hyped around the world. And, you know, the people that, some of the actors that were in that were porn actors in, in Hollywood. And FBI uh, informants. But, I mean, here's my question for yeah, you. Yeah. Bottom line, did, did they order the hit of the ambassador to cover up the weapons transfer? Or was it the security force, the Al-Qaeda force they'd hired uh, that yeah. got out of hand? Yeah, I think it got out of hand. I think, you know, look, the CIA controls Al-Qaeda. They're, they're controlling them in Syria. They control them in Libya. I would suggest that the Patsies used, uh, the, and it, you know, one could argue whether they were even connected to Al-Qaeda. We were told that by that phony 9-11 commission. The ones used in 9-11, we, we know that one of them was an Egyptian Air Force colonel named Mohammed Atta that spent a heck of a lot of time at the officers club at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. Hey, he doesn't sound like my uh, my idea of a run-of-the-mill Al-Qaeda operative. He sounds like a run-of-the-mill CIA operative. Uh, so, um, you know, we control, we've controlled this bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. And now when it, it's convenient for NSA to, 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 to turn on the fear machine again, Al-Qaeda ch uh, chatter between Al-Qaeda leaders. That's where I'm going next. I, I haven't that. gotten, I we're going to come back to you, Wayne. That's where we're going next. With right as all this Benghazi breaks, right as all this comes out, oh my gosh, close all the embassies, Al-Qaeda is going to attack. We'll cover that when we come back. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. I have
haven't even gotten yet to the issue that Wayne Madsen joining us just raised as we went to break. You have our so-called government, a collection of foreign corporate offshore above the law diplomatic community crooks. You have them founding Saudi Arabia, uh, creating the Wahhabis, creating Al Qaeda, turning Egypt over to them, turning Libya over to them, turning Syria preemptively over to them, giving them heavy weapons on record, and then lobbying to get Congress to authorize more heavy weapons. And the Council on Foreign Relations about a year ago you know, had the quote, we've shown it many times, we need Al Qaeda. They make up over 60% of the best fighters. The Al Qaeda flags chanting they're going to blow America up after they've taken down Assad. We, we, we've written countless articles and shown you those videos. And then Lindsey Graham, the anti-gun, pro-open border, uh, John McCain 2.0, slime bag, comes out today and says, I agree with Obama. I met with the vice president. This is scary. You, we need to close all the embassies and be scared. Al-Qaeda is on steroids. They're coming to get us. It is so frightening. Give up all your rights. Ooh, <laughs> you know, do what I say or the monsters will get you. When Al-Qaeda is what they use to take all our liberties here in America. It's so obvious. It's so ridiculous. I want to play a clip of that and then go back to Wayne Madsen uh, to talk about uh, how serious this is. Because they might actually have some of their Al-Qaeda forces blow something up. And again, some of the mid-level and low-level jihadis actually believe they're attacking America. They'll follow orders from guys up on top. Most of them born in America, turns out, are really CIA. Because CIA isn't America, folks. It's a bunch of foreign interests that have infiltrated it and totally control it. And that's congressional hearings that have admitted that. So let's go to Graham, fear-mongering, saying, it's scary. You need to be scared and forget all the other news, the NSA spying, and just do what they say or Al-Qaeda will blow you and your family up. I mean, I would not. If I walked in a restaurant and my waiter looked like Lindsey Graham and had eyes like that, I'd get up and leave. I mean, I, just, I get shivers up my spine. And by the way, we know about Mr. Graham. Oh, boy, let me tell you. <clears throat> clowning around okay wayne uh, we're going to get into more issues in the next hour but you've got the floor on this issue break down what we're dealing with with these threats with supposed embassies that are being targeted and just the fear-mongering uh with cnn going this is scary isn't it uh, yeah i mean isn't it amazing that so-called news reporters like ate too much candy crowley is talking to miss south carolina about scary things um uh, look this this is made out of whole cloth. This this chatter that was intercepted uh, because NSA has to push back against uh, Congress. Congress is actually growing a pair now and starting to talk about uh, limiting the power that NSA has to conduct this surveillance in in, in total violation of the which Fourth they Amendment. admit is targeting the press and not Al Qaeda. They run. Yeah. So so what we have here you've got you know miss south carolina lindsey graham you've got uh saxby chambliss you know the the draft dodger from georgia he's been engaged in this this rhetorical flourish you know the guy who called max cleveland who left three limbs in in south vietnam called him a coward during the campaign uh you, and then you've got um peter king uh the, the, this guy who supported the provisional wing of the irish republican army talking about terrorism and, you know, my sources in British intelligence told me who were in New York following this guy in the 1970s and 80s said Peter King was not only raising money, but providing uh, material uh, material for the provisional wing of the IRA and that committed acts of terrorism in, I in Northern Ireland, in the UK. I was on London underground trains where I was forced to evacuate because of suspicious packages found during a IRA bombing campaign in London, and we've got this guy, Peter King, talking about terrorism. He's a terrorist. This fat Gaelic terrorist has the nerve to be talking about terrorism, and now he wants to run for president of the United States. It, it, you know, these politicians are revolting, disgusting, nauseating to hear these guys on these Sunday talk shows with the, these talking heads like Candy Crowley and, and these other uh, nimrods. Um, talking about that, that all they're doing, all they're doing is feeding the fear factor on behalf of NSA. We know now that NSA is using propagandists 
using social networking to go after people like Tom Drake and, and William Binney uh, and Russ Tice and all these others who have blown the whistle on NSA. I mean, Snowden. Are you got kidding? Him. They're using social network to go after me? Oh, you, and myself. You've caught oh, them. Absolutely. Uh, people yeah. need to know all these trolls yeah. attacking us, folks. It's because we're up here breaking the news. Yeah. What am I, you know, what am I paying money to the Naval? My tax money goes to the U.S. Naval War College. I hold an international relations certificate from that, uh, that college. And I, there's a professor up there who engages in constant uh, Twitter campaigns against people like myself, against you, against Russ Tice against Tom Drake against others. You know, uh, you know what, what are we paying uh, the these salaries of these people to attack us for? You know, I, I I'm just uh, disgusted by it and insulted by it. And I think it, we're the ones. You know, he says he's. You know, people like that say they're not speaking on behalf of the government when he was on the Chris Hayes show on MSNBC with Professor U.S. Naval War College right under his name. I defy that person. That, Telling me that he's not. Well, let's speaking. expand on this. Well, the, yeah. the open announcement that they're going to have Pentagon squads, PR squads, every federal agency, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Social Security is going to do counterintelligence against their recipients. The government is getting on a war footing against the American people and announcing the gloves are off and that they're going to engage in psyops or lies against us. What does that signify? This has been going on for a while, but what does yeah. it signify they're bringing it out in the open? Well, I remember old Cass Sunstein. He was uh, uh, basically Obama's information czar. He's, he's out, out of there, but, you know, his wife's our U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Samantha Powers, so the policy will continue. No, you're right. That's in the news, that, that they're yeah. running it. A, 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 yeah. Our government, and they go, it's legal for us to have psyops attack citizens and press now. Yeah, good. It's also legal for me to go after these sock puppets and these psyop organizers and these... Uh, people who are on the government payroll who engage in this. It's fine for me to go after them. And, uh, but you exactly, know, I think, but, but I mean, look, just because there was a law before and they yeah. say there isn't a law now, this is what the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany oh, yeah. did. I mean, it's they are announcing. They denouncing. are Yeah. They are really showing who they are. That's right. You know, in, in, in the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, East Germany with the Stasi, how did you go after people? You had the neighbors and their colleagues denounce them denounce them to the media, denounce them to the government, denounce them to the public. And this is exactly what's going on today in this country. It's, it, it, you know, it's the, it's the, it, it, it's, it's so un-American. It, it defies logic. Well, it's, meanwhile, all we're doing is exposing the, the looting of the banks, the looting of our yeah. rights, uh, the killing of the ambassador. I see this as signs of desperation. What's the mood in D.C.? Oh, and you know, it's, Look, amongst the intelligence community, those who have not been sucked into the, uh, the, the, the machine that causes your brain to get scrambled and you drink the purple Kool-Aid, you know, the, the Jonestown beverage of choice. If, if you're not in that category, your, your morale is very low. People at NSA, uh, you know, they're not all buying into this. They, they, there's people there that know that what people like Snowden have said and others is the truth. But look, that Q group you mentioned earlier, that's internal NSA security. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. By the way, uh, after Wayne leaves us, I'll get into this breaking news at InfoWars.com. Insider blows the whistle on military takeover plan. It's really a DHS takeover plan at a military base. Why would the U.S. government need a mock U.S. town at Fort... Uh, how do you pronounce that? Chafee? Uh, Arkansas. So we're going to be uh, getting into that report that's up on 
Infowars.com and all the photos of it. Uh, going back to Wayne Madsen, Wayne, I want to get specifically into some of the other scandals and also in the next segment, open the phones up so people can ask you questions. But I really want to get, because I know you have a lot of government sources and others, how far is this going to go? Because, uh, I mean, even the Washington Post, I saw a story yesterday, said, oh, uh, Obama succeeded where Nixon failed. And it was like, he knows how to persecute the press. It's kind of cool when he does. And he knows how to persecute people that whistleblow corruption. And then you've got John McCain saying attack Russia and all this bizarreness over over Snowden. I mean, it, 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 it's, I know they're tyrants and they've, they've, they've taken us over, but it's also kind of comical that, that it's so dysfunctional and obviously illegal, everything they're doing. Yeah, it's to the point now. You know, they've got everybody now. Uh, you know, the, our sources, in, investigative journalist sources have dried up for the most part. They're scared. They've been frozen. We know with the, eight, you know, the uh, wiretapping of the Associated Press and Fox News and, 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 and other journals, New York Times, uh, myself, I, I, we can't get people to talk. But look, that doesn't mean there's still not people in the government that know this this garbage is being invented, you know, out of whole cloth. For example, the list of embassy closures, this is what the government's not telling you. First of all, the list was odd that, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, Arab and Muslim uh, embassies and consulates uh, in Arab and Muslim countries that were shut down for today. Uh, and um, Plus they're shut down on the weekend usually anyways. And, and there's, yeah. And, and now they say they're going to be shut down. Many are going to be shut down for the, uh, following week. Uh, be, but we have to remember, on the 7th of August to the 8th, it's the celebration of Eid al-Fitr. It's the end of Ramadan. Everybody, you know, the fasting is over. It's, you know, food and, 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 and partying and, and, and that type of thing. So obviously, you're going to have closures anyway this week. This thing is made out of whole cloth. I looked at the list, though. It was very funny that not among the embassies closed was Islamabad, where Kerry had to walk back something. He said, he said, well, you know, we're going to stop using drones on Pakistan. And he had to walk that back. That was obviously a political decision not to close the embassy in Islamabad because tensions are very high now between the U.S. and Pakistan. Uh, also not closed were, were the embassy in Beirut. Now we're told that there's a significant problem with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Well, they didn't close that embassy, so obviously there is no problem with Hezbollah in Lebanon. There never has been. And, and the embassies in Tunis, where there's been violence, and in Rabat, Morocco, where there was violence over the Moroccan king freeing a Spanish spy who was a convicted pedophile, raped 11 Moroccan boys. That one wasn't closed. And, uh, and now this following week, we have embassies in Mauritius, Madagascar, Burundi, and Rwanda, countries that don't have large Muslim populations closing. But, the, uh, you know, one in, in Mauritania. Is, is being opened, and the one in, in, in Kurdistan, up in northern Iraq, the consulate there is being, this thing, this thing was put together by a bunch of morons in the State Department, political types. If they asked any of the seasoned Foreign Service officers there, they would have said, well, look, if you're going to close the embassies, you better, you better close all of them, and don't do this kind of cherry picking, because your list is going to smell really bad, and you it know smells what? You know real what? bad. Uh, you're absolutely right. I, when we come back, I want you to recap this. I want to put a map up for TV viewers that are watching at infowars.com forward slash show or on presentplanet.tv. I want to put that up for people so they can understand they're not shutting them down in you know Baghdad and Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. They're shutting them down down in Rwanda, way down on the uh, west coast of Africa that has a tiny Muslim population and no history of terror attacks. I want to explain this to them. I mean, the, the disdain they have for the public is just unbelievable. And, and what a way to change the subject. From our government funding Al-Qaeda to, oh, we're closing the embassies, they'll get us. It's all just a simulation targeting a public they know doesn't pay attention. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more.
coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. Well, the former head of the NSA is on Fox News right now, calling for us all to give up our rights. We have to have everything we do tracked and recorded and get rid of the Fourth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment, for that matter, and have the feds in our lives because of Al-Qaeda, who they founded and who they've armed on record. And uh, we've also got, oh, these embassies shut down in places like Rwanda, where there's never been any terrorist attacks against any Western operations, almost no Muslims. Uh, and they don't have it uh, shut down uh, in uh, other places. And of course, you've got Rwanda right in the middle of Africa. Uh, so just so just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous uh, that things like this are going on. And Wayne Madsen, former of the National Security Agency, syndicated columnist, WayneMadsenReport.com. Recap what you were saying. They're not shutting down uh, embassies uh, in Lebanon, north of Israel. They're not shutting right. them down in places like Pakistan. They're just shutting them down where it doesn't even matter uh, to then say, see, we need to spy on you without warrants. And Congress, how dare you say, you know, that we shouldn't outdo the East German Stasi? I mean, this is ridiculous. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the list of embassies that was closed down makes no sense at all. For example, there was an attempt by a gunman uh, some time ago uh, last year uh, to enter the U.S. Embassy in Ankara in Turkey. Uh, he was shot before he could get in there. But uh, that embassy wasn't closed. Why? Because Turkey's a member of NATO. Turkey's helping us in Syria. This list is unusual. And also, in, in the embassy in the Soviet, the former Soviet Central Asian stands that are primarily Muslim, they weren't shut down. The one in Azerbaijan wasn't shut down because the U.S. Has a, has a lot of oil connections there. Uh, so, and now this coming week, uh, the, the one in Kurdistan is reopened, the U.S. consulate there. Uh, and, and, and a few others, and now new ones are being closed. The thing makes no sense at all because the thing was, I think it was just done at, the, at a moment's notice to help NSA convince everybody that they need to continue doing this surveillance. So, that, that, so somebody, some political weenie at the State Department pulled this list literally out of their butt without any sort of forethought. And anyone who knows anything about U.S. foreign policy and the closure of embassies uh, knows that Ida Fitter is coming up this week. So, uh, you know, these embassies were going to be closed anyway. And uh, this whole thing was just a, an effort in, in a ridiculous propaganda ploy. Folks, I want to give you the number so you have a chance to talk directly to Wayne Madsen. The phones are open for Wayne Madsen. Your questions for a syndicated columnist, researcher, someone who's advised Congress, the EU, on national security issues concerning uh, the NSA-type grids. Your chance to ask him about Benghazi Gate, any of it, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. Questions only for Wayne Madsen, 877-789-2539. But we have now an open debate about the persecution of the press, persecution of whistleblowers. They've been caught with the stand-down order on Benghazi. Uh, they've been caught with Fast and Furious. They've just been caught... Uh, you know, as you said a month ago when you were down here visiting in Austin, Texas, Obama has out Nixon, Nixon to the power of 10. Uh, how do you think Obama's going to end? Because I know he's a front man, but they've gotten so much done under him. Uh, where do you see all this going? Uh, uh, I mean, if, if, if liberty versus tyranny was a football game, what's the score? Well, look, it's his birthday today. He's 54 years old. He's 54, 52. He's 52 years old today. Uh, he's got, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be leaving office um, in um, uh, 2017, January. Uh, he's going to still be a young guy. He's now talking, you know, he's now going to be taking contributions for his presidential library, which it looks like it's going to be in Chicago. Oh, boy. And, and now he's going to be on everyone's take. You know, he's going to be just like Bill Clinton and the rest of them get, getting donations. So this guy is going to be obviously doing much more with the Saudis and the Qataris because he knows that they're going to give them a sure, lot of money. Sure, he's turning the whole Middle library. East over to them and their Al-Qaeda people. That's yeah, this is part of it. That, absolutely. He's looking He's looking at his legacy and his library and, and, and all that so stuff. The so the real whore phase uh, of pardons and everything's about to begin. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be cutting all kinds of side deals. 
Uh, and obviously countries that are not going along with this program, like Russia and China, are going to you know, face a lot more uh, uh, pushback uh, by the U.S. Uh, look, he's got Susan Rice as his national security advisor. She's more interested in going after Venezuela and Cuba and Iran and Russia and China. She's very silent on Bahrain, you know, which is it did a very bloody crackdown on its uh, own population. Uh, uh, where where is she on Saudi Arabia, the, one of the most misogynist countries on the planet? Uh, wh where is she on the, on these other U.S. supported dictatorships? You know. This is what we're going to see because Bahrain's going to probably kick in a nice hefty sum for the Obama presidential library. And, and so will uh, a lot of these other, not only countries, but companies. And we look, you know, if I, I, I'd say that the people in charge of the Trans Canada pipeline, the XL uh, pipeline, uh, they're probably already writing the check for the Obama library. So he approves that uh, that pipeline. Absolutely, shut down, fans. shut down the American pipelines, and only yeah. allow their pipelines to to open up. I mean, this is how how real business is done. You don't build things; you just get yeah. paid off and shut down people's uh, competition. Speaking of Bahrain, Amber Lyon, who won several uh, uh, Emmys uh, for uh, uh, her television news reporting. She found out they were killing her stories when she was there of Bahrain lining men, women, and children up and shooting them, and were paying a half million dollars per episode to kill. Were they killing her show? They were paying a half mil to CNN to kill reporting on it. So when we say pro regimes, we mean pro globalist regimes they've seized. And I want to be clear I've studied history as you have. I don't yeah. romanticize Russia. My family's been in America since the Mayflower, before it was even colonies. I know Russia's got its own problems. You know, at, at the same time, they're decrying spying. They're they're trying to go more free market. They have lower taxes yeah. than us in Russia. Russia, and then Putin defies them. And then John McCain, for those that don't know, on Friday said basically we should have war uh, with with Russia. And we're seeing other bizarre, insane statements uh, with the whole Snowden thing, giving him temporary, yeah. uh, you know, temporary yeah. uh, a, a visa. There. What do you make of that? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, look, look. How do how do we uh, how do we uh, c uh, criticize Russia? We we have George Soros, uh, who's uh, one of Obama's uh, big fund funders, an uh, admitted Nazi collaborator. Yeah, right. And he, he you know he's paying money to this uh, pussy riot to uh, you know basically uh, disrupt uh, religious services in Moscow and 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 uh, you know chop down crosses in Kiev and Ukraine and all kinds of other things. Uh, but gee, you know I don't I don't see some of these. Uh, uh, where, where's uh, Miss Lindsay? That's right. They're going and violating other people's speech yeah. so they can claim Putin and Russia is violating free speech exactly. when they're the it, ones setting up free speech zones it, here. It, and it, it turns out that that punk rock band is openly funded by the State Department. Absolutely. And who, who's in Cairo today uh, as Obama's personal representatives? But Miss Lindsay uh, and uh, John McCain and Sane McCain. Uh, they're his personal representatives over there. I mean, when are these two guys going to go to Ikea and start picking out furniture together? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's incredible. You send these two lunatics. Uh, who, 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 and it, both, both these guys have been very critical of Obama. So, you know, but look, Obama's not his own. He's being told what to do. It, it's like when he ran in 2008, uh, somebody that I know with the CIA said, you know, you don't know what you're supporting here. You have no idea who this guy is. And when, you know, I thought about that and, and, and started looking into him, of course, he'd already been elected president. I realized this guy had a CIA pedigree, it, you know, and I wrote a book about it. And by the way, I have a new book out about it. It's called NSA Surveillance Reflections and Revelations 2001 to and by the way, I want to carry all your books. Why in the world or are they not in the InfoR store? We need to get that deal going, Wayne. I know some of them are e-books. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some of them are, and uh, also, uh, well, they can be uh, Lulu and uh, and Amazon create. Uh, they, they're carrying both of them. They came out last week, but basically, it's it, it, it's to show that I was reporting on some of these. Absolutely, listen, I'm going to carry the hard copy starting next week. We're going to get you back on about that to go over the whole history of the spying. Uh, Wayne Madsen Report dot com. You can find all of his new books that just came out. Uh, you're not too good at promoting your books, buddy. You need to tell me about this. I want to get you on about that. Wayne, stay there. We're going to come back and take some phone calls on the other side of this break. And you know the number. It's different on Sunday than it is on the weekday show. It's 877-789-ALEX. It goes right into me here. I control these calls. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the New Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buy in these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> In the next two segments, I'm going to go to your phone calls for Wayne Madsen, uh, formerly with the National Security Agency, syndicated columnist, great uh, author and researcher on, on a host of subjects. Uh, just always has amazing info that just continues to turn out to be accurate over the decade plus I've been interviewing him. And then I'm going to get into the attack on free speech. Did you know in Seattle they've banned the word paper bag? 
and the word citizen saying it's it's hurtful. Brown bag is racist, uh, and the word citizen is racist. I actually have newscast. I'm not I'm not joking. And I have articles where Gadsden flags are being taken down, the police are being dispatched. That's racist now. Don't tread on me. Uh, they'll say your guns are racist. In fact, they are now saying they're racist. And then take those. Uh, this is authoritarianism and a dumbed down public. Yeah, there's Fox News. Seattle to ban potentially offensive words like brown bag and citizen. I mean, I say this stuff now, and you know, it was like in Wisconsin, an animal shelter had a baby deer because the mama got run over. And they sent us eight armored vehicle SWAT team to the well-known facility and came and killed the deer in front of them because you're not allowed to have a baby deer. I mean, it's just, it's just like, it's like every control freak nutball gets into government or corporations, big ones, and we just bow down. That's the opposite of what America is. We're all, ladies and gentlemen, independent, sovereign citizens that have rights. We're being told, oh, we're running over your rights for reasons. No, that's not what's happening. So we'll get into some of that. That's all up on InfoWars.com. Articles like confirmed Benghazi was covered up of transfer of arms to Al-Qaeda. Isn't it rich? Lindsey Graham says Al-Qaeda is on steroids now. Well, yeah, after you and Obama gave him heat-seeking missiles, you've been saying give him more heavy arms, you little turd. But you know the general public can't find their butt with both hands. I mean, you people are just unbelievable. You just, you're just sick. It's like a bank robber calling the police on the teller. Uh, veteran Sioux City over takedown of Gadsden flag. That's on InfoWars.com. Insider blows the whistle on military takeover plan as they're training to occupy U.S. towns and cities. Amazing. Again, it's not an attack on our military. It's an attack on who's commanding them. That's just some of it. Uh, Wayne, uh, we're going to go to the calls right now. Any other tidbits you'd like to add before I go to these calls? Well, I mean, you know, I, I always say, you know, you hear these stories about what they did to the poor, you know, uh, fawn up in Wisconsin, and then there was a and there was a 95-year-old man who was tasered and shot by the police because he refused medical treatment in some facility. So they just killed him. Uh, I mean, a 95-year-old guy. You know, oh, no, there's uh, a new video oh, of a bad. homeless guy calls a cop reportedly a bitch. She pulls the gun out and shoots him in the stomach. And they're saying they mail. I, I'm seeing 10 articles a day where cops shoot innocent people unarmed now. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like every dystopian future sci-fi movie all actually you look at them now and you think my god what is that? is that a movie is that a documentary or, or, or no is that a vacation spot <laughs> yeah right. a lot of, I, I see dystopic yeah. stuff made 50 years ago and i'm like that was like a good place to go live <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I, I mean it's it's it, it's you know and i i said this even back uh, you know when we had bush cheney in there uh you know i said america seems to be suffering from moral indignation fatigue it's like Oh, you know, people say, I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to hear anymore. But, you know, they've got to hear more. They've got to, you know, they've got to understand that if they don't, st if they don't stand up and refuse uh, to be just uh, swallowed up by this machine, uh, that, you know, it's going to come get them eventually. They're, they're, they're going to succumb to it. You know, they're going to be, uh, they're going to wake up. You know, you know it, it, it's like many of our founders said, you know, it's not like South America where the tanks go in the street. Overnight, you got a military regime. Uh, the day before, you might have a democratically elected uh, president. In this country, it's like a slow burn. You know, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it's a gradual thing, and then when you realize that it, it's too absolutely, late. but those are hard to beat because they're so incremental. David in British Columbia, up in Canada, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead, Madsen. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, um, on your issues, uh, questions for Mr. Madsen. I was um, you've raised numerous issues there um i'm wondering on on the on the benghazi situation do we see it as an october surprise much like jimmy carter where the actual the intelligence agencies were trying to subvert obama and put Mitt romney in power um secondly do we see putin's resistance to the u.s as a counterbalancing force which might help stabilize the world and yeah. uh, thir thirdly do we see uh these recent, uh, I'm looking at antiwar.com, and I'm thinking Interpol issues global alert after prison, break, prison breaks in Iraq, Libya, and Pakistan. And we have Syrian rebels capture anti-tank missiles from government forces. And I'm wondering if these prison breaks of al-Qaeda personnel are meant to reinforce the Syrian uh, I was about attack. to say, I mean, I want him to answer that, but on the last one, they've been caught doing fake prison breaks where they get people, train them, 
basically get them to get in line, find out who will work with them, and then they release them to go carry out operations and call it a prison break. Wayne? Well, that's true. I'll answer the, the, the last one first, then, since we're on that subject. You know, the, exactly, because there was a huge prison break in, in Yemen some years ago, and, and people who were accused of being involved in the bombing of the USS Cole were, were released. Uh, you know, and all the guards are looking the other way. Obviously, yeah, I mean, the, the U.S. had some, must have had some say-so there. And, of course, you know, and then these guys that get released from Guantanamo, Many times they they go back uh, working with the uh, insurgent groups, and if they were tortured, they may not have been insurgents to begin with, but they certainly are insurgents after they were tortured. So exactly, know, it's, it's factories of producing these people. Exactly. So on on the Benghazi thing with Mitt Romney, look, Mitt Romney was caught with an open mic saying, uh, "What we need here is a uh, is our Jimmy Carter strategy." Now, what does that mean? What happened with Jimmy Carter? Um, the, 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 the George Bush and Bill Casey uh, arranged to meet with the Ayatollah Khomeini's representatives in Paris. By the way, it, this came out in the Iran yeah, Contra. This is not. Absolutely. This is not your opinion. It was arms for no hostages. Keep the hostages at the embassy in Tehran, and uh, you'll get weapons from us. They they sent the weapons over there. I wrote extensively about this. They were sent over on a ship called the SS Poet out of Philadelphia. Tow missiles. Yeah, everything. Uh, parts for Iranian uh, F-14s um, that were embargoed, and they were all delivered to the port of Bandar Abbas. And then after that, the the SS Poet with the 34 U.S. crew uh, disappears. Disappears. They the government said it disappeared in the Atlantic on its way to deliver corn to Port Said, Egypt. It was never even sighted going through the Straits of Gibraltar. So that's just like killing the yeah. Navy SEALs that were on the fake Bin Laden raid. Absolutely. They killed the guys that delivered that. Everybody working for the government should know, if you're involved in a dirty op, they're going to kill you, idiots. Yeah, yeah, because you know too much. <laughs> you know, and uh, so, yeah, so when he's, when Romney said a Jimmy Carter strategy, bingo, that was it. I said, oh, he's, there's something going on, and I, I would almost bet, that Petraeus had to be involved. Remember, he was the neocon darling. To sure, run sure. Well, I'm not defending the neocons, but let me ask you this yeah. question. Why did Obama go along with the cover-up then? Well, he couldn't fire Petraeus. It, look, it, it, you know, he couldn't fire Petraeus before. It looked bad. It's people say, oh, why is he firing the CIA director right before the election? He didn't want that problem right before the election because, you know, people start asking questions. Obama wanted to keep it focused on, on his cult of personality, right? So he didn't want this problem. So they fired, They where did they fire Petraeus? The day after the election. Absolutely. We're going to come back with Don <laughs> in Michigan, Dan in Wisconsin, Thomas uh, in Ohio, Merrill in Utah, and others. And thanks for the call from British Columbia, David. I'm Alex Jones, your host. PrisonPlanet.com is our backup site. Check it out. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Look, our government's always had problems, all governments have historically, but special interests that are very ruthless have gotten control. And if you look at how they gave weapons to Iran, and then weapons and advice to Iraq to have a seven-year war that killed over a million people. Or you look at how our government funded Russia to, the, to then fund North Vietnam to invade the South. That's all been declassified. You figure out, wow, it's not a government. It's these big arms dealers and banks and combines, just like the Rothschilds funding both sides of the Napoleonic Wars. That's in mainline textbooks. And they just sit back while we all kill each other and take our liberties and take our freedoms, which makes their crimes more secure via national security. And I'm sick of it. I want to go to your calls quickly now with Wayne Madsen, NSA whistleblower, with your comments or questions for him. And let's go to uh, Don in Michigan. Go ahead. You're on the air, Don. Hi there. Hey, buddy. Yeah, like, um, Wayne Madsen, I'd like to know, they've had three prison breaks here recently. Are they playing on the false flag where they're getting their people out so they can use them? Well, yeah, I think I think that's cannon fodder. Look, there was a big one in, in Iraq, right? And it's not 
it's not far from Iraq into Syria. So obviously, how many, what was it, 500 or something like that? That's where so they yeah, send the jihadis. Yeah, instantly you got 500 added to the ranks in Syria. The weapons are starting to uh, go into uh, Syria in a big way now uh, because, you know, Assad has been able to fight back uh, successfully against these rebels, these insert, these jihadists. Uh, and and Israel got, hit Russian installations in Syria, unprecedented. And now you got the Syrian Kurds battling the uh, Islamists, the jihadists uh, in Syria. And, you know, here we go with the Kurds again, you know, but these Kurds, unlike the Kurds in Iraq, don't have the support of the United States. So, um, uh, you know, the, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing turn of events, but it's part of this. Remember, this whole neocon op thing that is to destabilize the, what they call the crescent of 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 uh, insurgency, the crescent of violence, which uh, they claim goes from Morocco all the way to Indonesia, the Muslim crescent. and uh, Global is exactly destabilization is good absolutely. for weapons contracts. Anything else uh, there, Don? Well, it was Pakistan and Libya, and then one of the articles in The Guardian, they, they went through specifically yelling out for certain prisoners to free them. So I just wonder if that was their answer. Oh, yeah, they're just, right. yeah, You're no, right. they've been yeah. caught before with these fake breaks. Look, when Gaddafi said on TV that why is the U.S. funding Al Qaeda that they are the rebels, everybody laughed at him, thought he was crazy. Now look, I've, I've seen Gaddafi personally uh, in, in in Libya and in New York at the UN, and I, you know, I, I think the guy might have been a hash user, but you know, I was at least told that by some people close to him. But I don't think he was, you know, he was not off off his rocker with that statement. He was right on the money when he said. Well, that's all been admitted that the main force, especially, yeah, yeah was Al Qaeda. I'm just sick of them taking my rights, the name of Al Qaeda, when they run them. I mean, it's in, in, in Lindsey yeah. Graham. Al Qaeda's going to get us. Aren't you scared, Candy? Oh, I'm very scared. I mean, this is like bad acting in a third grader play. And I think Al Qaeda is the name of a guy. I think there's a guy named Al Qaeda, and Lindsey probably wants his phone number. All right. All right, Don. Thank you. Dan in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Yeah, thank you. Uh, listen, Wayne, I, I would just like to ask you a question. Uh, now, I've been hearing that, you know, this whole uh, Benghazi uh, attack was really about uh, kidnapping Ambassador Stevens in order to go ahead and negotiate with Obama for the release of the blind sheet. Being out more yeah, that's what I've heard is it was going to be a false stuff. flag. It could have been a false flag so Obama could have a fake hostage rescue. Right. Well, that would, that would look, it, you're right, because, look, even with the Iranian embassy seizure that, you know, the Iranians had demands. We just didn't want to accede to any of their demands. They had they wanted the Shah back. who was, uh, you know, had gotten out of there, for example, that was one of the demands. So obviously, yeah. if there was one of these false flag uh, embassy hostage seizure situations, there would have been demands made. You're yeah, I mean, we that. know this. Yeah. There was a stand down. They've been caught lying. We don't know what really went on. We know there were weapons there. Wayne said that nine months ago. It's now confirmed. CNN, we appreciate your call. I mean, I, and I'm not tooting your horn. That's a big deal. How did, how were you? Because you were the first guy we got on that knew that. And then Schaefer agreed, and so did uh, Pachenik. Uh, I mean, I, you can't give us your sources, but you were pretty sure on that. I mean, is that like widely known? Yeah. Well, it was, it was amongst people in the intelligence community and in the State Department and even in the military. I, I, again, this was before the, the, the huge crash. Look, they were already going after some whistleblowers. They'd already indicted a few. But it wasn't that the chill hadn't totally set in yet. So some people were still willing to talk. Sure. Uh, well, they're hard I mean, to find these days, though. <laughs> well, we just got we just got an urban warfare center DHS built on a military base from the people inside. And they say they're training to take on the American people at these villages. That's admitted they're training to take on the Tea Partiers, and that's in the Army War College reports and everything. But it's still bizarre to actually see the photos. So we got a whistleblower insider blows the whistle on military takeover plan. Um, we got that from a, a contractor who was former military. And we vetted that through two other sources, by the way. So that's up on InfoWars.com. Uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, Megan in Pennsylvania. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Welcome. I didn't know you could hear me. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Alex. Hey. Um, I, um, uh, do you think it's more that the people of America are scandal-proof these days or that we're just not hearing about it? Because, I mean, the truth came out about Benghazi. I mean... So many people know about 9-11. I think it's so a mix of both. I mean, I think it's a mix of both. But you just get used to living, you know, basically in a tyranny. And then as the increment, it's like the frog in the pot. What do you think, Wayne? 
No, I think a part of it is what I call moral indignation fatigue, but the, the caller's right. We're not given a lot of this news. You know, a uh, veteran uh, newsman with NBC, John Palmer, died, I believe it was yesterday in Washington. And, uh, you know, he's, a, he's he, uh, no pun intended, and he is a dying breed of journalists. Back in the, the day when he was on the air, uh, you, you know, we got straight news. And remember, it was a half-hour news broadcast but twenty with commercials. It was only 22 minutes of news. You know, we got more news in that 22 minutes, and we get an hour after hour after hour on these dumb cable news programs. And, and that's part of the problem right there. Uh, the, the news back then was focused. The time was at, at, at a premium. And people like John Palmer and, and people like, you know, there were many like him, Paul Duke. I, I've met some of these guys, and they were great guys, but unfortunately, they don't exist but anymore. But, I mean, now, now we have state-run yeah. media other than a yeah. few talk radio and a few websites like WayneMadsonReport.com, DrudgeReport.com, InfoWars.com. Whether it's left, right, center, libertarian, we want truth and justice and freedom. Mm -hmm. They're openly announcing that the Pentagon, oh, what did you make of last week or now a week and a half ago, the Pentagon going, we're going to stop lying, but we're going to go out and engage all the blogs. I mean, I see yeah. that as the opening salvo, of the takeover of the media. But wow. but yeah. the entire NSA Pentagon building at Fort Meade, hundreds of brass there, they look like they had the worst, they look worse than Japanese surrendering <laughs> uh, to, to Douglas MacArthur. Their morale looked oh. hellish. Well, what was happening there? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Look, they're all having to uh, fill out financial disclosure forms more often than they ever had in the past. Uh, in other words, they don't have any private life, life at all. Not that when you work at NSA, you're like anybody else who works. But they're you know, living under a real oppression. Yeah, very, yeah, very much so. That that Q group is like an internal Stasi uh, combined with Gestapo, combined with the KGB. It's absolutely awful. Uh, they use psychiatrists. If you express any opposition to what's going on, you're sent to the shrink. And based on, and these aren't even qualified psychiatrists. These are they're political are, hacks. Psychologists, yeah. Anybody get a psychology degree? My God, you don't need a medical. You don't need to. Well, the point is, they cherry tests. pick ones that go along yeah. with the game plan. Then you lose your security clearance if they deem you crazy. You know that they used to do this in the Soviet Union. They had psychiatric hospitals where they sent dissidents and say, "Well, if you don't like the the Soviet uh, fatherland and uh, the workers' paradise, you must be crazy." So that's what they do. We you do know what, that. Wayne? Take us to the wall. Take us to the end. Fifteen more minutes. We're going to okay. come back and go to. Uh, well, Thomas is gone. We're going to go. To, we're going to go. Thomas, Merrill, and a few other callers uh, on the other side of this quick break in the final segment, and, and then I'll get into some of this political correctness, how they're trying to divide and conquer. But I want to uh, have Wayne finish up where he thinks this country is going. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. We're talking to Wayne Madsen. We'll also tell you about his two new books that are out this week. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. and arms 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of june to the info war by the way tomorrow on the weekday show 12 noon 3 p.m eastern we'll look at insider blows the whistle on military takeover plan why would the u.s government need to uh, build mock u.s cities and towns and train for invading them well they admit it's for gun confiscation if they're ordered. But if we politically stand up against this, they won't be able to sell the idea. That's why we're in an info war. But they want us divided against each other. Military against civilian. I hear mayors calling us civilians, police calling us civilians. You're civilians too. And the military is not supposed to be involved domestically. But now it's like your upper class of your government and then all of the rest of us are civilian. I mean, it's very aberrant, the conversion we're seeing here. The new August issue of InfoWars Magazine is out. It's a great way to wake up friends and family. You can get a 12-month subscription to give friends and family or buy them in bulk at cost. It's got Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman merged together uh, on the cover to show that it's divide and conquer. And we look at how they're trying to get us obsessed on fighting with each other 
in the name of political correctness that really creates tribalism and division and racism, instead of worrying about global offshore banks that have diplomatic immunity and steal $85 billion of taxpayer money a month in QE3. I mean, Wayne Madsen, this is right out of the Soviet Union. What is your take on this? Oh, it, it, well, it's right out of 1984 in Newspeak. Uh, You're speechless, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, uh, Wayne accidentally unplugged his headphones. He's getting a plug back in right now. Let's go to a phone call while he's doing that. Thomas in Ohio. Thomas, I think he's got his headset plugged back in. We're watching him via video Skype. All of you can watch us at Infowars.com forward slash show, by the way, not just radio, but TV as well. Uh, what's your question for uh, Wayne Madsen, Thomas? Hello. Um, thank you for taking my call, and thank you for what you guys do. Um, I'll try to be quick. Uh, I see what's going on in Syria, Libya, Egypt, and with the NSA spying and all these different things. Uh, I'm actually a member of the CSPOA. I'm a police officer. I joined up because I wanted to physically take a stand against evil for what was right. And once I see this stuff going on, I want to do something about it, but we have no recourse. Um, I can't even get on Yahoo. I get on Yahoo, I see the news story, I try to comment, they censor my comments out. I mean, we have no recourse. What can we do about this? I mean, this stuff outrages me, but they say your recourse is to vote somebody else in. It's not working. What do we do? Well, that's right. The globalists have given us the Internet, but now they're practicing the gaming of it with cybersecurity, you only support alternative media. Uh, you only, you know, you support other people in your department that, that actually stand for a free country and not for thug thug behavior. Again, they train the cops to be thugs, and the public turns against them. Exactly what they wanted. The public should go out and talk to police, try to support good police, speak out against bad police. I mean, basically, good people have done nothing, and that's what has allowed evil to take over. Wayne Madsen. Well, absolutely. You know, I, I was actually looking um, uh, uh, for a story on my uh, iPhone um, uh, earlier. Uh, that's why I wasn't looking at the camera. But uh, I was looking for a story because you mentioned something earlier about, uh, you know, how, how this country is being destroyed. Do you know, a, a story to follow is what's happening in Detroit right now with the sell off of the assets of the city. One of the assets is Belle Isle, which is in the Detroit River between Michigan and Ontario, Canada. And they're talking about creating a separate commonwealth where, you know, it's going to be like a corporate tax-free zone. Uh, un it won't be part of Michigan. It won't be part no, of No, no, that's the model of the world yeah. is the globalist bankrupt Absolutely. things. And then they're exempt. And, and here you're going to have this island uh, in the middle of Detroit River where you're going to have all these multinationals coming in there, not beholden to any law. I mean, this is U.S. territory, but it won't be U.S. No, territory. No, no, no. They, they call it the Singapore I mean, model of authoritarianism. Yeah. That's what they're going to. That's what Peter Thiel's pushing. After they implode things, then they go to a hyper-libertarianism where they're exempt, but still feed into government troughs. Yeah, and what's next? Is Staten Island going to be next after that? Uh, uh, you know, Key West, uh, you know, uh, Oahu. You know, where does it stop? I mean, you know, is this going to be the bulk? While the corporations the lobby to raise our taxes to get it in corporate welfare. Uh, great right. point. Anything else, Thomas? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's good to hear police officers and sheriff's deputies that care. I know most of them I run into are awake and care. And by the way, the first people taking it in Detroit are the police officers and the firemen. They're losing their pensions. They worked all their lives and they're losing their pensions in Detroit. Yeah, and I've talked to like top nuclear physicist engineers. We should be working two days a week with all the automation, living like kings. But they've artificially are creating this neo feudalism. Uh, let's talk to uh, Mer uh, Merrill in Utah. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good, sir. And Wayne. Thanks for calling. Hey, um, I was up at the protest here in Utah at the NSA building, <laughs> and I ran into this lady who runs a website called, like, it's Silent Weapons for Silent Wars or something. I was wondering if Wayne's heard anything about yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, Colonel else. Alexander. That's the soft kill operation. You got any comments on that? Uh, well, it, it, you know, it's the, what's the name of the guy, Colonel? It's the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Is, is this the guy who uh, was uh, involved with the, uh, the uh, movie, it was uh, The Men Who Stare at Goats, was based on? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know him. I met him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, you know, that that data center in Utah, and thanks for protesting that. Uh, th- th- this thing is this this thing is a huge, you know, the NSA says it's it's collecting the metadata, but it's only looking at what it, it has a court order for. But not if it's out in that data center. What are they going to tell send these judges out there to make sure that they admit on record they're grabbing everything what did you make of alexander this week and i appreciate your call sir what did you make of the at the las vegas black hat event Uh, alexander the head of the nsa a separate alexander than the colonel alexander what did you make of the head of cybersecurity of the nsa saying we don't spy without warrants when a (laughs) month two weeks ago he admitted he lied to congress about that and he and General Clapper, the DNI, both lied to Congress. And, you know, it used to be that, you know, uh, con- that was contempt of Congress. That was a, a jailable offense uh, back in the old days. Uh, but, yeah, look, Alexander has gone to this uh, 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 before this conference. Uh, he was uh, basically banned this year from the other one, the, the DEF CON conference. Uh, but, he, you know, he's at, obviously he's out there trying to recruit people for cyber command. Oh, he said, but we guess- need you to fight for freedom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, to be part of the surveillance structure of the United States. So one guy in the audience apparently yelled and, and called him a liar, you know, and he, you know, he denied it. But uh, Well, he said, you know, follow the Constitution. A bunch of them heckled him. And then he goes, we are. We're promoting freedom. When he said to Congress, ah. we don't spell on anybody. And he goes, I'm sorry. I was misleading you uh, two days later. And then now he's like, no, no. We, and then he talked in a real slow NPR voice that, like, really freaked yeah. everybody out. Yeah, yeah. No, he's... Look, this guy came out of the Army Intelligence uh, uh, Corps. Uh, he's, he's uh, you know, out of, out of he was in Fort Huachuca. He, he, he's spent his entire career as, a, as an intelligence guy, just like his predecessor. Yeah, General and he's Pete. trying some NLP trick that doesn't work on anybody that has an IQ above 70. And the other problem is, why is it now that directors of the NSA serve these, like, lengths of time that equal, almost equal the FBI director? Used to be they they serve a, a normal military tour, three or four years max. Uh, Alexander's been in there for I don't know how many years. Wayne, we're out of time. We're out of time for yeah. calls. I apologize. I'm getting you back on the next few weeks, and I want to carry your books as I've read your others. They're excellent. Tell us about your new book and the other book. It, it's uh, the uh, same book. It's uh, NSA surveillance uh, reflections and revelations, 2001 to 2013. Basically, a compilation of what I've already written about NSA with some of the it's Snowden revelations. And, and showing how they match up. Wayne, Wayne yeah. Madsen Report.com or there on Amazon. Wayne, thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you again. Good to be with you, Alex. All right, that was a good hour and a half interview with him, 30 minute intro. I'm sorry to the other callers uh, that are holding. I'll have to get back to you tomorrow during the weekday show, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Yes, that's 9 a.m. to noon Pacific, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Mountain or Montana time, as they call it. A great job to the crew. Great job to all of you out there. We need your prayers and your support. Get the new August magazine at InfoWarsStore.com and wake up friends and family about Divide and Conquer and start filtering your water with ProPure at InfoWarsStore.com. God bless you all. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.